Hello there guys, welcome back to the channel. In this, this is going to be a two-part episode, I think. Looking at the installation of this, getting it all set up. In a previous video, I have done an unboxing, so if you haven't seen that, I'll post a link to that up here and I talk about it and do a kind of mini review. In this section of the video, I'm going to talk about the installation of it, how it goes. So yeah, please do follow along, like, comment and subscribe. Just looking at this false wall and the frame, I had kind of hoped that I would be able to sink this into the false wall. And I guess the question is, what's the point in having the false wall if it can't? Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work out quite like that. The space here is 150 mil. The depth of this here, the full depth is 150 mil. So sorry, is, is 155 mil. I might be able to, I might be able to squidge it in. And, but is, if the front of this frame here is not flush with the front of this here, then it's going to stick out. And I don't want it sticking out a little bit. If it's going to stick out, I might as well make it stick out a lot. And then I've got, I don't know, space to put toilet rolls on or something. And it kind of almost makes a feature of it. Obviously it's not a feature, but Either way, I'm going to have to cut this out here. That's fine. But I'm just going to spend a little bit of time now thinking and looking and obviously talking with the wife about what we want to do with it. As it is, let's say for the sake of argument that I cut this out and I made it work and I either put a little flush bit on the front here and, you know, I leveled it the whole way across or something. Just go with me, right? Cut that out and sit it in. Build a nice frame around it. I still have the soil pipe traveling the whole way here. So I would only be able to put the left leg down. The right leg wouldn't go down. I would have to build a frame and bolt it to that, which isn't ideal. This is designed to sit with both legs on the floor. So I am inclined to think that what I will do is build out a frame around this thing and sit it in front effectively sit it in front there. The only problem with that obviously is that then when we have the toilet, the toilet unit will come out to here, say, maybe something like that. And then the sink is there and it does then potentially make it feel a little bit tight. Time to do some thinking. Just getting my soil pipe ready, solvent welding, the joints together. This is going to fit into that bit over there. This is a kind of rubberized seal and push just uh, seals in like that. So that will pop off in a second. But I've just lined everything up to make sure I've got a nice smooth 90 degree bend on there. It was all I had actually. The only other 90 I had was this one. And obviously I don't need that end and I didn't have a cap for it. So I'll save that for another day. And I'll use these two instead. This solvent welded that into place here. So then what I can do is I can work out how much of this pipe I need to cut off to bring me up so that this end sits around there. And I'll be chopping off this section. I'll be cutting this down so that that is the right height. We're going to have the stand here centered on this bit gives plenty of space here between the edge of the pan and the radiator but also where the basin is it also gives plenty of space for where the shower is going to be ending the the, the, the screen and everything will end around there ish in fact less less than that it's going to be more there so there's plenty of space on both sides it'll be in line with this that it ends It'll be ending in line with that. So this line here gives plenty of space between the pan and the screen and the door will be opening here anyway. It's going to slide open here. So there's lots of space to get in and out the shower. You can still reach the radiator fine. You can still reach the sink fine. If we had it snugged up on this side, it would have pinched on the radiator a bit too much. I think made it felt, felt a bit too right. I have spoken with the boss 
and I've had my marching orders and we are going to be building out the wall. So I took a quick trip to Wix, picked up some of this. It's only 19 by 38, but that's plenty for what I need. So this can set back, you know, a fair, fair portion of the way and then I can make up the difference with the, uh, with the battens. The battens there, so that's good. So I'll just literally attack them on to the front of each of these. It also means that where I hit the shower, because we've brought this for right, so just background, gonna have tile backer board, adhesive, tile. This side we were just gonna have plasterboard and skim. So by bringing it out ever so slightly, we, we kind of make up some of that difference slightly. I don't want to build this area out because of the shower tray doesn't need it so it's fine there but by doing this and bringing it out it'll just make it slightly easier so that's fine that's all good it also means that I'll now because of these battens I'll have timber going all the way down to the floor on each of uh, each of these two areas here so that's good and anything else what else is there to oh yes I also got some lagging as well I got a bit more lagging so I can do the return pipe and the hot pipe along here. So all in all, successful trip to Wix. So, oh yes, the other thing is, this is just too long. And even if, say I've taken that inch of pipe out of here and butted these up, it's just too high. It, it takes up way too much space. So I've got one of these, all they had were these Floplast ones, which is fine but it means that I needed this connector here with the silicon seal or the rubber seal all the way around to connect onto that there and to connect onto this here. But that's fine. I don't, I don't mind that. That's no, that's no bad thing. So now because of this, I can then figure out what my, what my drop is going to be instead of using. I spent the last 10 minutes, maybe just setting this all up and making sure I'm happy with it. It's looking nice already. That's all fully connected and in. So the pan can slot in there and the water will wash it out there. I did actually have to raise this. Originally I had a timber here and it went up, but I had to cut that out to raise it up just because of the, the bend. But actually that works better. The height of the pan there is better. If you imagine those, uh, if you imagine this to be the top of the pan, it's kind of 48 centimeters, something like that, 19 inches. That's, that's quite a nice height, really, to have a, a, a pan at. Obviously, you've got the seat on top of that, but, but that's, that's good. I'm pleased with that. It's got a nice gentle fall there and then a nice gradual drop. So I've marked where this needs to be. The way that I work that out is by pushing this back as far as it would go leveling, finding my level at the front like this and then making sure that that was this distance, the distance between here and here is about 19 mil and that way one batten will run flush with this. That's one of those battens there. Then what I need to do is square it up with the room this way so I can pin this leg down and then I can get it square and flush this way. And yeah, go, go from there really. It's worth pointing out with this being kind of 19 inches high, something like that. Standard pan height would probably be about 18 inches, give or take, maybe yeah, 40, 45, something like that. I'm quite tall, so I prefer to have them a little bit high. But also down on the floor here, we're going to be having tile backer board, adhesive and tile as well. So the floor height is going to come up from here. Again, that's another thing that we're compensating for is the fact that the floor is going to be higher. I have decided to raise this off the floor. T two reasons. Firstly, or three reasons. This provides some support to this at the back and keeps that fall nice and even, rather than putting the strain on this joint here. And if and you know potentially slipping out this is now fully supported this is now fully supported so that's lovely and sturdy second reason this is 18 mil chipboard and these bolt screws here were probably about that long about 50 or 60 mil 
the top third of which was not threaded. So it would have gone through here and then would have just spun round and around and around and provided no grip to that. Thirdly, I have run it long here so that I can run a batten from here down and I can catch on here and that allows me very easily to continue the wall across and I counter batten the whole way across. So works out well for a number of different reasons. So the other thing is this, this is a 20 mil thick, but it actually works quite nicely as a spacer to make sure that this is nice and level the whole way up here. And uh, you can see that it's nice and level that way as well. So it's, it's coming together well. It is coming together nicely. I'm, I'm pleased with how it's going so far. And now you can see this is the batten that I'm going to install. It slides in nicely there. Lovely and flush at the front. Flush with this the whole way up. So I can have the tile back and board coming all the way over here. I can fix it to this and I don't need to worry about trying to drill into that because this distance here is barely anything. So that'll work nicely. So what I need to do now is fix, well, I've got quite a few things to do really, but I need to fix this back to the wall so that it doesn't wobble. And that happens through these bolts here. And there are spaces that I can use to cinch it in or move it back and that'll allow me to level it this way, which is good. And that sits nice and level and flush the whole way across. So I'm happy with that. I'm starting to lose the light now a little bit, but uh, I've got a bit more time left before it completely goes. This is the semi-finished look. Obviously I still need to snug this back, but I've put battens the whole way along here. So that's nice and flush. I still need to put one in here. But it is looking really rather nice. I'm happy with that. Yeah, very happy indeed. Something I sh probably should have shown you a little earlier is that I've been using my spirit level to make sure that I'm lined up and flush along the front here. So now I know that when I bring my board down, it'll catch on the front here and it can run up here. And so now I know that that is going to be perfectly flush and level the whole way along. What I will do is I'll attach a block here and I'll put a block down there and then I'll run a batten down. That gives this something to fix to as well. Just so I can fix the board parallel parallel with this. Same as I have here. But that way it's not floating if I have a, a block attached at the top and bottom. You'll see what I mean in a second.